morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Tuesday, June 23rd, 2009. The days are getting shorter. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S. It's 4.30 p.m. in London, 12.30 p.m. in Bermuda. In Mexico City, it's 9.30 a.m. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. On this day in uh, 1985, I believe, all 329 people on board an Air India 747 were killed when their plane crashed into the Atlantic Ocean near Ireland. It was later determined that a bomb had been placed on board at McCarran International Airport in Toronto. Uh, we have some breaking news today uh, regarding U.S. economic news. Uh, sales of previously owned homes in the U.S. rose at a slower than expected pace during the month of May. Uh, the National Association of Realtors said that sales rose, rose 2.4 percent to an annual rate of about 4.7 million units. This is up from uh, 4.6 million unit pace back in April. It's the second uh, month in a row that home sales have increased, so that's not bad news all in all. Also, uh, in some other news, uh, Ed McMahon, Johnny Carson's longtime sidekick, uh, passed away last night. He was 86 years old. Uh, now to our May news. May news is coming out of Washington, D.C. Last night at rush hour at about 5 o'clock, there was an accident on the Washington, D.C. subway system. They call it the Metro. Nine people were killed. Rescue workers searched through a mangled mess after one train rammed into another, 76 people were injured in addition to the nine fatalities. This is the deadliest crash in the subway system's 33-year history. All night, rescuers were using powerful blades to cut through the wreckage, looking for any more people trapped. Some of the passengers were hurtled through the air, landing on the roof of the uh, subway car below. The rear car of the lead train compressed like an accordion before leapfrogging on top of it on an above-ground portion of track on the heavily used red line. That's the line that runs out to the Maryland suburbs, out to Gaithersburg. The collision took place at about 5.02 p.m. local time. Uh, according to the Washington Post, they just put it up about an hour ago, the D.C. metro system had been warned that the oldest cars in the fleet, in fact, could be potentially experiencing problems, and this car that was, in fact, involved in the accident was the oldest car in the metro fleet. This is a safety failure. It'll raise serious questions among investigators. This comes only nine months after the last major U.S. train crash that, of course, was the cell phone using engineer out in California. There was a glimmer of hope this morning. It was posted by Le Monde, the Paris-based French newspaper, saying that the French, uh, the French Navy had, in fact, picked up signals from this. This, of course, although is orange, is, in fact, a black box. Uh, French military ships have detected sounds in the Atlantic, but they're not coming from the Air France Flight 447 black box. Uh, the report that was posted in Le Monde is, in fact, incorrect. The French Navy says that they have, in fact, been picking up intermittent signals throughout their search. They go and check them out, but apparently they're being emitted from a source other than the black box. The military and the airline are both confirming that the black boxes have not been found. And some very bad news for Boeing. They have postponed the uh, first flight of the 787 Dreamliner. Here's a picture of the plane. It's still in the hangar. It's where it's likely to stay for a while. Um, I'm going to read this. This is coming in later. Uh, Boeing is saying that the, uh, quote, first flight and first delivery will be rescheduled following the final determination of the required modification and testing plan. They say it'll be several weeks before the new schedule is available. Uh, apparently what they're incurring is Boeing said the flight needed to be delayed in order to reinforce an area within the side of body section on the aircraft. The aircraft's airframe is made from lightweight composite material instead of aluminum. According to the president of Boeing Commercial Airplanes, quote, structural modifications like these are not uncommon in the development of new planes, and this is not an issue related to our choice of material or the assembly and installation work of our team. Um, this is a, uh, another in a series of long delays that Boeing has uh, had to undergo with this plane. Uh, believe it or not, though, the plane has already received more than 900 orders from many of the world's largest airlines. The first delivery was scheduled to be for all Nippon Airways in the first quarter of next year. It's not known how that delivery is going to be affected by this latest delay. And 
it looks as if it's uh, IPC all over again. The battle for Chaucer, uh, the Lloyd Syndicate, has stepped up a gear yesterday after Pamplona Capital Management, the private equity group financed by Russia's Alpha Bank, increased its stake in the Lloyds of London insurer to 9.26 percent and said it's intent on acquiring 30 percent of the shares in news this morning. In fact, Pamplona has uh, upped its stake now uh, to 9.99 percent. So they've bought almost another uh, three quarters of a whole percent today in action. Earlier yesterday, the Chaucer board said it was in discussions with its leading shareholders, including Back BlackRock and Scottish Widows, about an offer from uh, fellow Lloyd's insurer Brit. We reported that yesterday. However, Pamplona f flexed its muscles by snap snapping up about 51 million Chaucer shares at 44 pence each and made an application to increase its holding above 10%. Apparently that application has not yet been approved because they're bottoming out right now or topping out right now at 9.99%. Last month, Pamplona announced that it was interested in making a partial cash offer, but the talks were not completed. In some other insurance news, this is being reported by the Royal Gazette in Bermuda. XL announced yesterday that Tracy Ann Kiffer has uh, been appointed Assistant VP and Senior Underwriter for Excess Liability in its Marine and Offshore Energy Unit. Kiffer joins XL from Ace Marine in New York, where she was responsible for a regional book, a marine liability business. She'll be based in New York. She'll report to XL's marine underwriting manager, James Thielbuehl. Kiffer had previously been with Aon Risk Management, Aon Risk Services, CNA's marine division, um, and St. Paul Fire and Marine Insurance Company. The stock market is down about 21 points. We'll go to a word from our sponsors. Every day, the world wakes up and goes to work, pursuing the unique opportunities that lead the global economy forward. The complexity and close connectivity of today's global marketplace is a true modern miracle that can create unparalleled success. But it takes confidence, passion, innovation, and understanding. Enabling opportunity. Protecting capital. Engineering innovation. Investing in your future. Ensuring continuity. Finding the right balance. It takes Aeon. Iran's Guardian Council, the country's highest legislative body, has ruled out the possibility of annulling the disputed June 12th election. This is despite allegations of vote fraud by the opposition. This photo here, obviously, is a picture of the young woman who was killed by the uh, Revolutionary Guard during protest over the weekend. The footage of uh, the woman dying on the streets in Tehran has been uh, one of the most frequently downloaded YouTube clips uh, in the history of the company. A spokesman for the Guardian Council said this morning that no fraud or breach had been witnessed in the election. They're confident there hasn't been any irregularity, they said. Uh, today in Tehran, uh, there's some unrest, but not too terribly much. Uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the incumbent conservative president, uh, in fact, uh, working through the Republican Guards, has ordered that a severe crackdown occur on anybody who's out protesting. Um, the challenger, uh, former Prime Minister Musavi, and his supporters have alleged voter fraud and widespread irregularities, and they are in fact now calling for a uh, general strike on Thursday throughout the entire country. One of the difficulties that the opposition forces 